Good morning, Balance Nation. <clears throat> it's Sunday, Sunday fun day. All right, so <clears throat> got on here on Facebook this morning. So I'm giving you guys a little, you can just hear my voice. I haven't talked to anybody yet this morning. Um, <clears throat> before my IT guy comes to put in 24 terabytes into my home server. So expanding that to get ready for the new platform and stuff. Anyways, <clears throat> okay, so Nora posted a, um, a post this morning and I wanted to just, just talk about it a little bit more. Um, so that's what I want to do. So Nora posted that assuming a lot of people in this group drink coffee, like yours truly, look at that crema. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. That's my new coffee, by the way, guys, it'll be coming out on the market soon. Anyways, um, here's the thing. So the post was caffeine decreases vitamin D receptor. So let's, uh, let's take a peek at this here real quick. So let me kind of give you an example of uh, what goes down. So <clears throat> people will have a post like this. Um, and I love these posts. Nora, thank you for posting this. I appreciate it because this is a good um, example of the type of noise and confusion that I like to clear up. Okay. So anyway, so you would click on this particular study, right? And what happens is, is you'll go to PubMed right? And you'll read caffeine decreases vitamin D receptor protein expression and 125 hydroxy 2D3 stimulated alkaline phosphatase activity in human osteoblast cells. Okay. <clears throat> so what happens is, is people will go ahead and do the, the two step, the juxtaposition where they'll go caffeine decreases vitamin D receptor protein expression. And I've seen this kind of stuff in other uh, places who are using it and they don't even read the study. So that's the first thing I'm always going to encourage you guys to do is go read the study because you're thinking caffeine, you instantly go coffee. Okay. So that would be like rape and you instantly go to men. Well, men are the only ones raped. Just saying really crude, morbid example, but that's, I'm just trying to pattern interrupt your brain. The bottom line is, is you can't go like and pull a, you know, a Stephen Gundry and go, oh, lectins, therefore, you know, no legumes or gluten does such and so, therefore wheat is bad. Or, and then people go, if gluten, then grains, that's not how it works. Okay. Um, it's all in the context, context, context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys what I do when it comes to these type of things, right? So the first thing is, is people go and they'll read the abstract. They'll just read this paragraph. They don't go to these, these kind of links, because oftentimes, um, it's, it's shot over to a place where you can't read the whole study, right? Okay. So this one, you click on that and it goes to here, right? So, and then you go on to the next one and it's not there. So you don't have access to the whole study because this is one of the reasons why science is the problem that it is today is because you got to buy all these, these things. All right. So is that making sense? All right. So anyways, we click here, we go here, we read the abstract activity of the various risk factors contributing to osteoporosis. Exactly. Various risk factors. And again, it's not factors, it's risk factors risk. That's a big thing that's thrown around out there very recklessly in the sense that, you know, you, you driving a car dynamically, amazingly, powerfully raises astronomically your risk of getting in an automobile accident. Now, do we all still drive? Well, of course we do. So be careful with that word risk whenever you start seeing that kind of fun stuff. Dietary and lifestyle factors are important. Well, imagine that dietary and lifestyle factors, huh? They need to throw in the other thing, which is mindset and environment. In the clinical study, we reported that women with intakes of greater than 300 milligrams a day had higher bone loss and women and women with in uh, women with the vitamin D receptor variant. Okay. So this is where these gene snips things are, are creeping in on people these days. Uh, and that's another big um, uh, BS lie that's going on out there. So 
again, let's let's see the thing we're talking about. We're talking about women. You're thinking, oh man, okay, this is a women's study. And then over 300 milligrams of, of caffeine a day. Okay, now remember, a cup of coffee statistically has about 100 to 110 milligrams. So you'd have to drink three cups of coffee a day, okay, or three espresso shots. An espresso shot generally has about 50 milligrams, okay? So you would have to have six shots of espresso every day to get 300 milligrams of caffeine, okay? People are like, I don't see a problem with that. I would love to have some milligrams. All right, so here's the thing. Keep in mind here, I'm just building a case. All right, and that we're at greater risk for this deliriatus effect of caffeine. Well, first of all, that's caffeine. Caffeine. Caffeine is not coffee. Caffeine is not tea. Caffeine is caffeine. And I'm going to show you this here in just a second, okay? So, however, the mechanism of how caffeine affects bone metabolism is not clear. Well, it's clear to me. Because it's contextual. That's what it is. That's the reason why it's not clear. Because you don't know all the other stuff that can also balance out a person's increased consumption of caffeine. It all depends upon the biochemical individuality of the patient within their environment, do, living by the lifestyle that they had. Okay? So, you can read through that. You kind of get, I'm not going to go line for line. So, therefore, we examined the effect of different doses of caffeine on 125-OH induced VDR protein expression in human osteoblast cells, okay? We also tested the effect of different doses of caffeine on alkaline phosphatase, which is why we use marker for osteoblastic activity. Not really. That's not, that's, I think that's intellectual dishonesty, okay? We don't, we don't do that. Um, but it is, but it's not like, it's not widely used and it's not in common use when we're, we're assessing things in clinical practice. We're not looking at alk phosphatase. Um, to determine uh, what people's bones are doing. So forth. So in addition, the phosphatase was reduced. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we read that and we go, oh man, well, caffeine screws up vitamin D receptors. That's the take home on here. Oh, and it causes bone loss. All right, well, guess what? Not if you go to the actual study. Okay, so here's what I've done. I have grabbed the full study. Okay, so this is the same monograph. All right. So let me show you guys a couple of things. So here's that same abstract, okay, that is posted on the PubMed thing to let people know about what the actual study is doing. But here's why you have to go to the study and read the whole thing to get the context, okay? Okay, boom. Caffeine is a naturally occurring methyl xanthine found in many beverages, food, medications, yes, medications, and dietary supplements and is consumed regularly by most of the U.S. population. Okay, so true. But here's the thing. <clears throat> See, caffeine, they're not talking about coffee, and the question was posed in the question by Nora about coffee, okay? So, caffeine consumption has been reported to decrease bone mineral density, increase risk of hip fracture, so forth and so on. So further, chronic administration of caffeine was noted to lead to a negative calcium balance due to impaired ability to increase calcium absorption efficiency. So basically, they wanted to test this. Okay, well now caffeine, have I well established, is not coffee. Secondly, coffee is not a single entity either. Like I've said, what are we talking about? We're talking about Arabica. We're talking about Robusta. Are we talking about, you know, what what uh, what, what region was it grown in? What's its mineral content? What it, its trigeminal content? What is its, uh, um, you know, uh, cholinergic acid effects and stuff like that? When it's antioxidant capacity? No one looks at that stuff, okay? So you got to look at the context. There's a big difference between dehydrated Folgers versus, you know, something like when I, I drink. So we can't think in the terms of um, coffee in the same thing. We can't think of coffee as the same thing. All right, so my, my, my tech is here. So I'm going to finish up this live stream video. All right, so here's the thing, guys. Let me just keep running through this. So here's what they did in the materials and studies for this particular science. So the caffeine and its reagents, okay, were obtained from this chemical company. See how that works? So they have to disclose what materials they used in the method. The second thing is, is guess what? It did, it, it's cell culture. So you buy these, these cell lines, okay, from different culture companies. Now these, not only that, but look what they did to these cells. They supplemented them with a 10% fetal, that's baby, 
bovine serum and streptomycin and penicillin. So they took these cells, right? And they fed them bovine serum and antibiotics, and then they proceeded with their test. And then people somehow want you to look at this study and think somehow it, it uh, transfers onto humans as a study of the effect of caffeine on your bone cells. So number one, these weren't bones in a human, they were bone cells that were a cell culture that are grown by a chemical company in a petri dish exposed to cow, uh, baby cow serum, uh, uh, blood serum and two different antibiotics. See the difference in the context that was required to understand these things? So then they measure these, these uh, uh, stuff and they come up with the results and they spit these out of how they affected this stuff. This is not even in real life. So you can't take one particular aspect or cell of a body, put it into a petri dish and expose it to some type of operation and then therefore extrapolate that to equal the same effect that happens in the systemic collectiveness of the intelligence of our entire system's biology. So that's the take home guys. So read your studies, don't extrapolate something that is a single uh, particular type of um, uh, molecule like caffeine does not equal coffee. Right, so caffeine in Red Bull is not the same thing as caffeine in a burnt Arabica bean infusion, also known as coffee. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that little little diatribe this morning. Uh, keep posting your your uh, uh, questions and uh, segments, and if you want me to evaluate studies or things like that, or walk you guys through how to do that, I'm here to do it. So remember, let's live life in balance.